Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. Uh, a couple months ago, I did a video uh, called Display Cable Madness. Uh, it was about how to connect your, uh, your pewter to some kind of screen. And it was a review of like VGA, DVI, HDMI, DisplayPort, and so on. All the different types of cables and which ones work together and that kind of thing. And in that video, I didn't talk terribly much about uh, the different flavors of HDMI. And recently, I had a fun experience connecting an Ultra HD Blu-ray player to a 4K television. And some things weren't exactly working. And that's when I realized, oh, wait a minute, I need to upgrade the HDMI cables I'm using. Because they were very old, version 1.4 something B or something like that. So I just wanted to quickly go over the different flavors of HDMI and what what version supports what and why you're probably going to want to upgrade to the latest and greatest if you're trying to do anything with 4K at least. And possibly also if you have a Blu-ray player that's upscaling to 4K. So, uh, first of all, we have two HDMI cables here. And in case you can't remember, that's what an HDMI cable looks like. Right? And you notice that I've got two cables here. One of these is version 1.4, and the other is version 2.0 of the HDMI standard. And you can't really tell the difference between them if you look at them. I mean, if you even read the, the text printed on the cable, it says, you know, blah, 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 high-speed HDMI cable with Ethernet. The other one says the same thing. There's usually no way to tell. But there are actually vast differences between the different versions of HDMI. So, quick review. We have, starting in 2009, uh, they released HDMI 1.4. Now, previous to this, there were, yeah, you know, there's other, other earlier versions, blah, blah, blah. But since HDMI 1.4 was released in 2009, pretty much everybody out there has at least 1.4 cables. So we'll start with HDMI 1.4. And 1.4 had a total bandwidth of 10.2 gigabits per second. Uh, it supported 4K at 4K at uh, 24, 25, and 30 hertz, and uh, obviously it also supported Full HD at 120 hertz. Um, 1.4 also introduced some other fun things like uh, HEC HDMI Ethernet channel. That's basically a 100 megabit Ethernet connection that also travels over the HDMI cable, so all your gizmos connected together can like share an internet connection, network, and do stuff, and you know whatever. Also, 1.4 supports ARC, which is audio return channel. That's actually pretty straightforward. Like if you have a um, if you have a TV, and then you have your AVR, your audio video receiver, and of course you're going to have your speakers that are connected to that. And then down here, say you're going to have like a Blu-ray player, B, R. Then what you do is you, you connect your receiver to your player or your TV box or whatever with an HDMI cable, and you connect your screen to your receiver with an HDMI cable. So if the Blu-ray is playing, uh, like say a movie, it'll send the audio and video to the receiver. The receiver sends the sound to the speakers, obviously, and it sends the video onto the TV. But what happens if you have, say, like, some other kind of TV box or, like, satellite TV or whatever, and you connect that to your TV? Instead of having to connect also another HDMI cable to your receiver, well, you can do that, but ARC basically allows the TV, whatever, whatever audio it gets in, there's a, an audio return channel, hence the name, where the audio from this guy will go into the TV and then back down to the receiver via this HDMI cable. So it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like bi-directional, but for audio only, um, which is kind of handy because it minimizes cables and, you know, not, not too shabby. Uh, anyway, HDMI 1.4 also supports that, ARC. Of course, it supports 3D, um, uh, eight audio channels, yada, yada, yada. Eight audio channels is probably enough for, for most people, I would think. Um, Anyway, then in, that was in 2009. Then in 2013, HDMI 2.0 came out. Now, okay, so HDMI 2.0 added 
4K at 60 hertz, and I believe that's 24 bits per pixel. 2.0 also bumped up the audio channels to from, let's say, 8 channels, and HDMI 2.0 bumped it up to 32 channels, which is kind of a lot. And also, 2.0 included improved 3D support. Okay, so that was in 2013. In 2015, HDMI 2.0a was released, and that added HDR support and also more or less full support for deep color. And then a year later in 2016, HDMI 2.0b was released, and that gave you just basically better HDR. There are a few other things that were added in these various revisions, but this is kind of the stuff that I think is important to know. So, okay, so what, what's the deal with this HDR and deep color? That's a good question. Okay, so first of all, deep color. Starting with 4K displays, uh, if you bought a, a, a 4K TV, like say in 2014, 2015, it most likely supports deep color. And deep color, normally displays are uh, usually like 24 bits per pixel. So if it's RGB, you have 8 bits, 8 bits for red, 8 bits for green, 8 bits for blue, 24 bits per pixel. And that gives you 16.7 million colors. So with deep color, it gets kind of complicated because there's this thing um, called uh, chroma subsampling, and like you can look it up if you want, but like your head will probably explode. Mine almost did because it gets very, very complicated, and they get into like video codecs, and pff, it's crazy. But the the gist of deep color is that you have uh, more bits per pixel, which means instead of only 16.7 million colors the display can actually show like over a billion colors. Now practically, in terms of the human eye, that's a little bit ridiculous, but <clears throat> the main thing that it fixes is like if you've ever been watching a, a movie or a show or something, and it's like a shot of the sky or something, and there's a, there's a color gradient from like bright blue to more of like a white color, and you may have noticed these sort of, these sort of bands of color, it looks kind of jagged, and that's because it doesn't have enough colors to display what you want, right? So the thing with deep color is that it jacks the colors up to something like 1 billion, and that gives you sort of uh, not necessarily deeper colors, but it, it's, you get more colors on the display. So it's supposed to fix this banding problem. So naturally, not only do you get the 4K resolution, but it looks a lot nicer in terms of the colors. Now, deep color is kind of a part of HDR, because mm -hmm. HDR is high dynamic range. And... Uh, the, like this whole chroma subsampling thing, the, the removal of the color banding, that's actually a part of HDR. HDR fixes that as well, but it adds on top of it an improved contrast ratio. So your blacks are blacker, your whites are whiter, the range between light and dark is, is higher. And um, there's some other stuff like HDR includes like an improved color gamut, and um, I think one or two other things. But the gist there is that, that if you looked at a normal TV, with no deep color or HDR, you'd kind of go, oh, that's a nice picture, right? Then if you take, like, a TV and you add deep color, you go, ooh, yeah, the, it's, like, smoother, the colors, and uh, it looks nicer, blah, 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 right? And then if you go to the next step up, which is HDR, which is kind of a new thing in the past year or two, for the most part, HDR basically improves the color depth, the color gamut, the contrast, and when you look at an HDR display, uh, most people describe it as, like, it, it really pops, pops. So it's like a, a much more, people describe it different ways, but you just have to see one. Um, but overall, it looks more realistic. There's an increased increase, increased um, depth to it, sort of. Like, it's kind of hard to explain. It just looks a lot better. So, but like I say, HDR is a new thing. Um, deep color is a little bit older, but if you want actual full support, even for just deep color, it turns out that with an HDMI 1.4 cable, um, the whole deep color thing, there's like eight different kind of like modes and sort of. And HDMI 1.4 supports two of them, but you'll need an HDMI 2.0 or higher cable if you want to support all eight. And then you go on your TV and you say enable deep color 
you go to your player or your TV box and you say, yes, give me deep color and it should look better. So um, if you want either deep color or HDR, you're going to want to upgrade to at least HDMI 2.0 to get the full shebang, right? Um, right, so HDMI 2.0B just gave even better HDR. Then in 2017, it was actually just the end of 2017, they came out with HDMI 2.1. Now there, the bandwidth jumped uh, from, I think, like the 18 gigabits of, of uh, 2.0, was it? I can't remember. Anyway, 2.1 jumped to 48 gigabits per second, which is like crazy. And it also added support for 4K, 8K, and 10K resolutions, all at 120 hertz, which is like, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, it also added uh, dynamic HDR, which is like even fancier HDR. And uh, there's also like enhanced ARC and like a few other, few other bits and bobs. So, right, so that's pretty much, that's pretty much the summary. Uh, even if you have something like just a Blu-ray player and uh, a 4K display and the Blu-ray player is upscaling the video to 4K, uh, you, it may support deep color, so you may want to ditch your 1.4 cable and get a 2.0, uh, and your picture quality could improve. If you're going to 4K or 8K or 10K, and especially if you want like the higher refresh rates, um, if you want deep color, especially if you want HDR, you're going to just want to get the latest and greatest, like find an HDMI 2.1 cable, uh, at least to connect, like say, your player or your TV box to your screen. Obviously, the HDMI cable that's going from your box to your receiver, well, yeah, if you have, like, super mega audio receiver or something, then get a new cable. Um, but even, like, an older HDMI 1.4 cable should be plenty for, uh, for, for most people. I mean, I'm assuming most people have, like, you know, 5.1 or 7.1 channel uh, receivers. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll put a link down in the description because there's a particular Belkin... HDMI 2.1 cable. Um, they're actually a little bit hard to find, but this Belkin one, it's HDMI 2.1. It's relatively inexpensive, and it's actually a pretty pretty nice looking cable. It's like not the super thick type thing, and it works really well. So yeah, if you're going to go 4K, be sure to upgrade all your cables. Even if you're not, you may want to think about it because you may discover that, ooh, I could enable deep color, and this whole time I didn't know. Uh, that's what happened to me. So Anyway, uh, for more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.